Hi everybody, I'm going to start by doing some watercolor backgrounds as a warm-up today as a way of painting as I haven't painted with my watercolors for quite some time so I'm excited to be back with you guys. I'm just going to activate my watercolor palettes and my gouache palette both from the Canadian company from Saskatchewan Stone Ground Paint Co. I really really love their watercolors. And this is just an example of one of their little watercolor tins. And I, you can tell what colors I really love. I think this mountain rose is one of my favorites, this beautiful, almost like a rose gold. And I always work on multiples. I have my water here and I'm just gonna go with the colors that I'm craving in the moment. And sometimes I don't clean my brush in between in between colors. I just sort of let the colors blend. I really love purple and yellow together. Those complementary colors that tend to create sort of a muddy color when they're mixed, but I really like that muddy color that they create. So I've added in that beautiful mountain rose color. And I'm gonna go with maybe adding in some of my gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. There's so many incredible products on the market now. I really like that. These are colors I don't typically paint with. I'm gonna add in some blue. It's really beautiful the way it's feathering out. And I'm really craving putting in some dark because I have this over here, this second watercolor painting started. I'm going to activate that and I'm going to dip into this gorgeous royal blue gouache. Ultramo Ultramarine blue is what it's called. And then I'm going to go over here to this turquoise. I'm not sure what color. It looks like a cerulean blue, although my palettes are a little bit mixed up. I get really excited and I move things around and I mix and match. So what you see may not necessarily be the name of the color. Now that I'm doing YouTube videos, I'm definitely going to try and do better about my colors and sort of helping you all, but that will take some time. just craving this color. It's like a um, philantho green, a philantho bluish shade. I really, really like this color. And I might just be bold and add it in up here. So I love the opacity, the more solid watercolor look next to the transparent watercolor look. So I do that in a lot of my work and I, I love to mix mediums, watercolor with acrylic and gouache. And this is just sort of how I warm up when I haven't painted in a while. I just do what I would call color craving exercises. And it was Flora Bowley out of Portland when I took uh, the course called the Fresh Paint course where I sort of learned how to hone in on my own style by painting multiple paintings. So over a hundred paintings in a shorter time period. And one of her little mini courses was about color craving exercises. And it just stuck with me, that term color craving. I know a few artists use that term. And it really is about intuitively what is calling you in the moment and can you kind of hone in on that and just honor it even if you're not feeling the color or it's a color you haven't used in a while interestingly enough i haven't painted in a while and i don't typically use the purples and yellows i don't use a lot of purple in my work at least not intentionally and i don't use much blue
and already I'm just feeling calmer. It's been a busy morning and this process just uh, grounds me. It's a way that I can kind of stay present and not think about, you know, something that had happened yesterday or what's going on this week. It's just completely being present in the moment with color, with texture, with water. Supplies that I love, I'm using a round brush and my 140 pound paper. And that's the warm up that I'm gonna do today. So my typical practice when I do watercolors, I'm really prolific. Right now I wanna drift this. The reason that I paint multiples is because I tend to use a lot of paint. So instead of wiping the paint off onto my paper towel or putting it right back into the water, I'm just gonna sort of dab that one because it's running quite a bit. I paint multiples, so the excess paint just goes right onto another painting. And I love doing that with acrylic. Actually, I'm sitting next to this handmade journal which I can talk to you a little bit about as I put these away to dry. And I'm going to go back to those and do some mark making over top. Here's a couple examples. So this is just an example of cleaning my brush. And I was working on a really large painting and you can see the energy, the brush strokes. And I got this really cool texture by working with a foam brush and smushing it. And some of the thicker paint had come out and it created this beautiful, beautiful reticulated pattern. So I love this and I've been using this in my collage. So I've been working on these triangular mountain collage wood panels and I've been cutting this out, embroidering it. You can actually see, I think I had done that on one of my videos, a little bit of embroidery here, and I would cut it out and collage it onto a wood panel. So just a really neat way of using, this is 90 pound paper, so it's fairly thin, and cleaning your brushes and then going back to that pile of backgrounds that you've started and then creating a new painting over top or creating collage or like maybe little art cards, maybe making an art journal of sorts. So I know that you all are probably gonna ask how I made this journal and I couldn't tell you. I, I can tell you, I have taken a lot of art journaling classes, how to make, I think this one is called an accordion journal. It may have a certain name, but basically I used some cut up paintings and I used, this was from a little calendar book that I had and I really wanted to reuse this thin paper that would otherwise be tossed out. I put on this black piece because I like working on black. And this, again, it folds into a little journal. I did embroidery on the edges. I do encourage you though to consider art journaling in your art practice. There's so many benefits. At some point in time, I'm gonna go through and review all the benefits that art journaling has given back to me. It's something that I practice as often as I can and I just love it. So this cover, I can't wait to redo because it's this was all one long painting. And the course I had took was where you use embroidery floss and you piece it together. And then what I had done was some of the sheets were too thin, so I glued watercolor paper over top of both of them. And then you'll probably wonder what this is about. In my work, I like to use white paint over top of something that I'm just feeling is not working with the painting. So for example, if I take a really busy piece of work, this was one of my draft oracle deck cards. I don't think it became one of the oracle deck cards. It was quite busy and it just like, I didn't absolutely love it. I like it, but I don't love it. And what I would do is go back to it and think, okay, what is it about this that I don't love? And can I just almost like using whiteout, add some white paint over top, 
letting it dry and then going back to it and almost editing it, editing my work. I learned that through Wendy Brightbill, an incredible artist out of Colorado. She has inspired me in so many ways. So do check out her classes. But then I kind of took it to a different level when I was taking art journaling classes. And I can't remember when this packing tape came into play, but I'm gonna just, I actually I don't have it here with me, but, oh, I do. So this is packing tape. I had never heard of this until the last probably six months. And it has this awesome adhesive on the back. And I'm using this almost as my whiteout of sorts. So at night when I'm tired and I don't feel like getting out my acrylic paint, I'll just tear a piece of this off to size. And then I'll take my sponge, which is well loved from the Dollarama, and I'll just go to a page. So for instance, maybe I don't like all the black in this particular area. So I'm just gonna take a little piece, I'm gonna wet the end of my sponge and I'm gonna activate the adhesive. And I'm gonna need a little bit more water and it's quite sticky and it will really stay on. I'm just deciding where do I wanna put that. This is not everybody's style, but I love painting over top of this brown paper and it's almost like it reminds me of when I was a kid and we would do crafts and painting on paper bags and it's almost like a fresh start so at some point I'm going to go back over top with my paint pens with acrylic paint and just really use this as a different substrate a different background than like this you know blank page this blank canvas I really like this color I love the look of white over top of this color. So just as an example, if we were to kind of maybe draw, oops, I'm fine. White pens are a challenge for me. This one's kind of, kind of coming out, but I'm gonna go to my favorite one, the one that's a little bit more reliable, this Uniball Posca pen. Gonna give it a really gentle shake with the lid on and I'm just gonna go over top of that line here and there we go so this use of white acrylic paint over top of this brown paper I'm really loving in my work I'm not sure if I'm loving this shape, but I will probably go back over it. You can write, you know, a word. I paint because I wanna feel calm, because I deal with anxiety in general. My whole life, I just, I've always had this sort of underlying rhythm of anxiety. It's part of my personality and I definitely have learned how to embrace it. I think it's made me a better artist and a better human because I have compassion for those with mental health issues. Um, I'm kind of sidetracking, but calm is just a word that really resonates as to why I paint. So I'll go back to this and, you know, if I didn't like this, I almost feel like the Posca pen. Oh, it does dry pretty quick. Sometimes you can get away with, depending on the substrate, you can get away with using a bit of water and um, removing it and starting over what i would probably do is just go over it with a better pen because <laughs> my white pens white paint pens are so tricky to find so i'm not sure how i got talking about this art journal but the benefits yeah of using say a painting on paper that you have and you don't know what to do with making it into an art journal so you can revisit that painting in a new way and I wanted to show you where I'm at with my Oracle deck. So going back to the very beginning, whoops. Okay, I have so much out in front of me, I'm really excited. 
An artist that I really love is Kathy Nichols. I will link her profile in my description, but it's Kathy Nichols Art. And she advertised a course called Create Your Own, Create Your Own Oracle Deck. And I never thought about creating an Oracle deck, but Kathy can just convince me to do anything because she's amazing. I love her classes. They're full of so much inspiration and beauty. She really is a beautiful human, not just artist, but she seems like a beautiful human from the interactions I've had with her over the years. So create your own Oracle deck. I thought, well, wouldn't that be just a really interesting course? So I had enrolled in the course and through the course, you need to use, or at least the way she teaches you, she starts by creating these works of art on wood, these little wood panels. And at the time I enrolled in the course, I could not find these panels online. I'm in Canada. I just couldn't find one that I really liked. And they're fairly lightweight. They're a great size. They're a bit bigger than a deck of cards. And the way she teaches the course is getting the art, getting the painting down over top of these panels. So I was really excited about it, but I couldn't find these panels and she offers these through the course. So you can actually purchase these panels. If you go onto her website, she will send you them in this cute little box. So I thought, well, I'm going to invest in this because I'm just invested in this project of creating my own Oracle deck. So coming from the US, it was quite slow at the time with shipping. There was a lot of challenges and I was waiting for a little while to get these little blanks. In the meantime, I had seen my other, uh, I would say she's another one of my favorite artists, Alina Hennessy. Oh, and just to back up, I had purchased one of Kathy Nichols her flower medicine oracle deck and I just love it I think it's the most beautiful gift you could give yourself you could give to somebody it came in this gorgeous box and her course was to teach how to make your own art into this type of an oracle deck so this handheld deck where the back of each card is the same so for those people that like to shuffle the deck and you know follow synchronicity in the universe they can pull a card and read about the card, find meaning in the card, meditate on the card. You could use it as an artist prompt. At the time, I was thinking, wow, I would love to paint a flower every day and go through her deck and use her flowers sort of as an inspiration, almost like a guide that, you know, whatever flower card I pulled, you know, that would be the week I would practice azaleas, for instance. And this deck, I thought, well, the gold edging, everything about it is so beautiful. So this was another reason that it didn't take me long to decide to do the course because I have a lot of art and I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to have my own art in this handheld deck and bring my own story, my artist's story into the theme of a deck to make it cohesive and to also have almost each card because it has one of my original pieces of art, it has a story of its own. And I find for the viewer, they can almost decide on how it resonates with them personally without kind of knowing the story as to why I painted the card. I title my art, usually the title has meaning for me in that when I title a painting, it is almost referring to my relationship with creativity. I can talk about that at another time because I'm going a little bit off track. I don't have as much time today to videotape, but I just wanted to share this beautiful, beautiful deck. And then the art other artist who has actually collaborated with Kathy Nichols with uh, works in, um, in the past, they've done lives on Instagram where they do readings for each other. So uh, this is Kathy Nichols, but the other artist is Alina Hennessy. And I will also link her in my profile description because she is, she was offering a create your own Oracle deck class as I was waiting to get these blanks in the mail, I saw her advertising this course. 
So I often don't take two courses that are quite related at the same time, but I really wanted to get going on the course. So I enrolled in Elena's course, which they're both extremely different and they are both so valuable. So do, you know, look at, look at both courses if you're thinking about creating an Oracle deck. The other course that I kind of took, I'm a member of Skillshare and I have a yearly membership, but there's an artist on Skillshare, Monica Stadelski. I think it's S-T-A-D-A-L-S-K-I, but I'll link her as well. She did some little mini courses on how to create your own Oracle deck and how to publish your own Oracle deck. So this is just a little bit of history as to how I got into even thinking about putting my art into a deck. So I enrolled in Alina's course. I have just finished it. And those of you that have been following me know that I have now. These are uh, drafts, what I had done when I enrolled in Alina's and was waiting for these wood blanks from Kathy's course. Oakley, you're gonna be a guard dog. What I had done was I, made my own little blanks on watercolor paper because I love to paint on watercolor paper. So that is where this pile comes from. And then I would put notes on the side. And while I was taking the course, I had really just created as many cards as I felt like, as well as incorporated my own art into my deck. So back to where I'm going with this. I have a local printer, artmagic.ca, and he was amazing because I said, you know, I want to see what these prints look like, and he said he would do wallpaper labels for me just to get an idea. Oh, I see I have a delivery, just two seconds, I'll be right there. I'm so sorry, so I don't edit my videos. Pardon me, I just had a delivery. This is, okay, interesting that this, uh, this comes up here. So I put a whole bunch of my artworks on these sticker labels because it was just a way for me to See the art at this size and decide how I want to incorporate this art or if I want to incorporate it into the Oracle deck. I'm kind of going off track, but I decided when I was taking Alina's course, it's a wonderful, wonderful community. I think there's about 62 people in that course. We gave feedback to each other, those of us that had kind of got into the design phase of our deck and I decided that this element just didn't suit the card and I really I had a lot of feedback as well that it would be great to have a really subtle border almost a border you know if you were to see my work of art or sorry my artwork framed at a gallery to have this little border almost to highlight it and the other feedback was to add in more words so this was just like a draft and it was a way of supporting a local company where I can reuse these. I can just cut this off. I can make thank you cards. You know, if someone purchases my Oracle deck, I was able to kind of hold what almost would be a bit of a deck in sticker format and really kind of determine where I want to go with this project. So a lot of these didn't make the cut. And the reason for that, I really wanted the deck to be cohesive. Some of the feedback was, we love the art with the white space, but not so much with these straight lines because a lot of my work I paint right to the edge of the paper. And, and by the way, if you're a beginner artist, I recommend <laughs> leaving a tape border with painter's tape because it is hard for your client to frame a work on paper when it goes right to the edge. Even though that's the advice, I still don't take it myself. I just sit down and paint. So. That was awesome. What I thought though, these sticker labels don't give me a really good feel for a card. So I wanna see the thickness of cards. So I got another local printing company, Little Rock Printing, to print me almost a size close to what I would publish for an Oracle deck. And this is the cover I had chosen and this is approximately the size and, okay, so where am I going with this now? 
I was so excited. Right now, these decks are being printed. So for those of you that do want to purchase my Oracle deck, I'm probably going to print 500. And I know that they have started printing them now, so I'm really in the phase of waiting. And they say that waiting is very much, it creates anticipation. So I suppose I'm, I'm learning patience <laughs> and hopefully it will just be so exciting to get the deck because we've been waiting for it. I wanted to tell you that you can create your own cards really easily. You don't have to publish them. So what I would recommend is just considering if the Oracle deck interests you and you're an artist, or even if you're not an artist, I know with Alina Hennessy's course, she says, you know, even if you're a creative and you want to use royalty free images, if you want to create digital art, again, royalty free, even though it's not your own paintings, you can still create a cohesive deck for yourself uh, of your work. This was one I had purchased while I was again waiting for the blanks to come in the mail. So this is, I'm not sure if I showed this artist on one of my videos, Adrienne Vita. I think I had briefly mentioned her. I went on to Etsy and I looked at all of the tarot and oracle decks that came up. I tried to search Canada first and then obviously uh, did more of a worldwide search. And hers just really stood out to me. Maybe it's because I use the moon in my work. I love the contrast. I love the art on these cards. I love that this is all of her own art. So these would be an example of someone else's oracle deck that really spoke to me. This one says, there's no limit to your capacity to enjoy this moment in time. Embrace it now fully. So that's why I am painting today. And this deck is just, it's really comfortable to hold. I could shuffle it, shuffle it if I want. It's a beautiful, beautiful kind of cohesive deck by this artist. So I was really inspired by Adrian and her deck at the same time was kind of designing my own. And then I kind of led myself down the road of it can be a real nuisance <laughs> cutting. And I actually did all the rounded edges because the printing company I went with locally, the draft they sent me didn't have rounded edges and I had to do all the cutting myself. So it made me search for some blank tarot cards and I thought, well, wouldn't it be awesome to get some blank cards and to be able to do my own art, just like original art on these cards. So I had purchased this through, it was just through Amazon. It was really hard to find blank tarot cards uh, locally here. These, it says durable cardstock, and when I read about the description, it said one side was more of a paper, the other side has more of a sheen. I found, though, it took a while to really figure out how to properly paint, what, what supplies to use on. I kind of feel like the sides are the same. <laughs> so if you do end up ordering cards like this, this is by, it's uh, spelled I-M-A-G-A-M-E almost I'm a game. Oh, now I get it. I'm a game. <laughs> and uh, it has a website, I'm a game.net. But if you want to almost start fresh and create a work of art around this card size, these cards are, they're pretty good. I would just say it might be better to decide what substrate you absolutely love to paint on like, you know, for instance, watercolor paper and getting cards that are watercolor paper instead of this. This is almost like a plastic material. So I feel like not all, especially not watercolors, would do well on this, on these cards. So I was using, I was practicing making cards for myself and it was so much fun. I just took a whole bunch of cards outside and grabbed my paints and I was playing around with my reticulated pattern, which is one that I know a lot of you have asked about and I know a lot of you can get in your work. I've seen so many artists use these patterns and it's just one I'm not quite ready to share and I don't know if I will because I share 
pretty much all of my art tips and tricks, but this is one I kind of want to hold close to my heart, my art. And it's something, if you played around, you could totally figure out how I do it. But anyway, I just wanted to show you, now I have these awesome cards with texture, with colors I love. I tried to create cards of all different colors and I can put images. I started to see butterflies emerge in a lot of my cards. And while I was doing these cards, I also was working on collage on wood panel. So this is a work in progress. And this, all of these little pieces, except for a couple of them, have come from me cutting out the textures and colors I love in these cards that I had ordered. <laughs> so what started out as planning for an oracle deck is now kind of going into pieces for collage. So this is one that I had started still working on. This is another that I'm working on. Again, I'm really lucky that my dad had made me these wood panels, but you can purchase these cradled wood panels pretty much at any local art store, even Michael's. And the background of these is acrylic ink. So that's why you can see the wood grain coming through, which I really like in my work. And I just loved to be able to cut up all of these little cards in different colors and just sit down in the evening and kind of assemble it in a cool way. And it was just very therapeutic. So if you have a bunch of cut up paintings again, or if you decide to work on say Oracle deck cards and there's some that you're not sure what to do with, you can cut up those pieces and the possibilities are endless. So. This is just an example of all of my little cutouts. I really like to do collage on wood panel because it's very flat. And for this collage, I used both Yes Paste and Matte Medium as my glue. I'm trying to figure out which works best. I like them both. Whoops. Okay, so, oh, and the other thing I was gonna say Last night I used my cold wax medium and these were sitting outside all night because the cold wax medium is a mixture of beeswax and there's also some solvents. Some, uh, I couldn't tell you the names of the chemicals, but I do recommend using gloves if you're going to finish your watercolor work with a sealant like a cold wax medium. So I'll show you what I use. I often use Dorland's Wax Medium by Jacquard. There's really just these two available uh, across North America, Australia. There's a lot of comparisons of these two online. This is the first time I've purchased Gamblin. I find it very similar to the Dorland's Wax Medium. So go with whatever you have, you know, in your country. But what this is, it doesn't have a UV protectant, but if you have painted with watercolor, which is what I do primarily, and you wanna seal it, you can actually use this cold wax medium. And you just buff it on with, I would use either a clean white, you know, an old shirt or a microfiber cloth would probably be okay. I've seen some artists use a sponge. I just used, I put a tiny bit on a glove. I went outside because it does have fumes and I just buffed it on over top of the watercolor. Now the learning from that, I did not buff over this gold because this gold was an oil-based paint pen, my deco art paint pen. And I realized when I was buffing on over top of that gold, it actually removed it, which makes sense based on the product. So what I did is I just buffed all around the watercolor and around the edges. And I also buffed these edges just so this paint pen is sealed in. So again, this is not a UV protectant sealant, but it's really great. You can use Spectrafix to kind of fix some of your work if you use 
you know, charcoal or pastels, or if you're really nervous about things moving when you're protecting, uh, you know, Spectrafix is great. But going over it after with a cold wax medium is a really, really neat option. So I had done that with, with these ones. Now if I spritzed water on here, it would just run off. And I'm going to buff it more. So after it's dried, you know, about six hours, go back and just buff it out again. And it would give it more of a sheen. So just a heads up, if you have any oil-based products like that DecoArt pen, it will smudge, it will run. And I did find some of my gold watercolor came off when I was buffing on the wax. But I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. And I'm just going to see if I can move you guys... Are you closer? I had some really great feedback from everybody on YouTube here about when I glued the paper down onto this wood panel about, you know, the potential of using either a molding paste, just kind of make the edges less obvious um, from where the paper is glued on. I also had some great comments about uh, using some stenciling. I really appreciated those. And what was the other one? Gluing on the paper. And then, oh, I know, it was, I think, gently sanding off some of the edges, just so you couldn't get, you wouldn't see these hard edges. But, you know, to be honest, I'm really, really happy with where these are at right now. I'm going to put this one in my upstairs bathroom. I have a little place on the wall for it, and I don't keep a lot of my work, but Something about this one just, it brings me peace and calm and joy to look at. This one as well. And yeah, so I just wanted to share where those were at. And I also wanted to show you, I found this really neat frame. <laughs> now I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit bring you guys out. So there are three tiers in this glass frame, but you can see I put in my Oracle deck. Most of these are in the Oracle deck. Some of them aren't. If I used collage, I really wanted to make sure it was like royalty free collage. Uh, the uh, lock to, Nepalese lock to papers, I wanted to make sure they are royalty free. So I really didn't use anything with uh, collage in it just in case. So that frame was cool. I'm not a huge fan of the backing here where you know you have to do measurements on the wall and I, I really like easier hanging but you know I was really excited just to find this frame. I found it at Winners here in Canada. It's an Umbro frame. I'm just gonna set that aside. And yeah, so what else have I been up to? Again, just learning a little bit about how to seal my watercolors for when I want to sell my work. I'm really excited about the Oracle deck. Oh, I am rebranding. So I am, I'm going to, right now I have, my website is under construction because I'm artbyallymack.com. And... I am going to just have it my full name. So that's a whole nother video, another story, but I'm in the process of rebranding. So I'm really trying to get all of my business cards and my website and everything a bit, a bit more me and just under my name instead of Art by Ali Mac. So here are some little canvases I've been working on and I'm playing around with that reticulated pattern. I'm still not exactly sure how to finish this composition. These remind me a bit of an underwater scene. I really love the bronze. So I'm thinking I'll do a lot more mark making in here and really see where it takes me. And I think I just really want you all to try and think about how can you take your work to the next level. So if you have work sitting around, how can you how can you take your work to the next level? You know, if there's something you can do. So for me, I just spent a long time trying to figure out textures I loved, papers I loved, 
you know, what paint brushes I loved. I'm still learning a lot about myself. I think the process of creating an Oracle deck has taught me so much about myself. So just if you get to the point where you'd like to do that, but not actually print it or publish it, I think it's just a brilliant way of learning about who you are as an artist and what resonates. And, you know, even if you did say one little deck that's all originals, I mean, how amazing is that to gift to a family member or, you know, um, maybe some works turn out so well that you'd like to put them into print. I really like the subtlety of that beautiful, it's almost like that phthalo green that we were using earlier in our watercolor warm up today. And I can't wait just to do some mark making over top of these. So that's where I am at and I can't wait to do more videos with you soon. I can't wait to do an art supply video. I am just waiting until my time frees up more in September when uh, my son is in school and everybody's kind of back into the swing of things. We can, we can end on, I'm just gonna kind of get this wax off my hands here, dip it in my watercolor paint. So I'll wrap up by just doing a little bit of mark making over top of this particular watercolor piece. This, I had planned to do an Oracle deck card but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna remove this watercolor line here. And uh, we can do some mark making. So here's, again, this is like my color craving exercise that I had done with this piece. And I just wanna show you, a lot of you have asked about Neocolor 1s and Neocolor 2s. So this is a Neocolor 1. And then this is a neo color. Let's just see a color that you could really see well. So the neo color one Swiss crayon is a wax crayon. So you can, I love to go in over top of my watercolor work with mark making. And this will not reactivate with water. Put one over here, maybe some down here. So this, when I try and activate it with water, it doesn't move. So these are awesome. I love to finish canvas paintings. I use these over acrylic, over watercolor. They do not reactivate with water. This, for instance, this would be this is like watercolor in a stick. It's a Neo Color 2. And let's just say I want to add some more color in here. And, you know, maybe I want to leave it like that. Or maybe I just wanted to have more red in here and say I don't have a great red watercolor. And just check out how beautiful that is. So that is the Neo Color 2. So the Neo Color 2s are like watercolor in a stick. They'd be awesome to travel. They're really, really great if, say, say you wanted to first draw with watercolor. So we'll just do sort of a little abstract flower here. And maybe you want to use a slightly different color. in here and then I'll use the Neo Color 1 as the stem just to show you as an example you can just see how I can blend in some of that pink and I can just you know go back to it and make a watercolor painting from my drawing so that's pretty awesome these are also very pigmented. So as I'd mentioned before, one thing I want to see is if these cards hold watercolor. I don't think they do. So I'll just, instead of putting that pigment back in the water, I'll just put it onto another painting, a base layer. 
And then right now, because I used the Neocolor 1s, the wax crayons, the stem doesn't move. So there's, you kind of have to figure out what it is you love about your art style, what you want to have more as like a permanent mark versus being able to reactivate it. You can blend these in a way that's quite beautiful. So as an example, we'll take this beautiful magenta, this Neo Color 2. Whoops! Ah! Calgary's really dry, so they break often, but that's okay. They're still usable and great. And I'm going to just blend these to create a new color. If I used really high quality watercolor paper, you wouldn't necessarily probably see those marks in behind. But see, there's so many uses. Uh, a lot of you had asked how I use them. What I like to do as an example, let's just see. Oops, I smudged this one so I can go back to it. Let's just say I want to go with, maybe I want to add a bit of turquoise where I smudged my watercolor painting. So the Neo Color 2s, I'm going to activate that and And then if I wanted to add marks and I didn't want them to move, I would go back to the Neo Color ones. And where this becomes important would be if, if for instance, where are we at here? Where can I show you? If I wanted to do some mark making with my Neo Color crayons, on this wood panel, for instance. Oops, there's my timer. If I want to seal it with wax medium, then I would use the Neo Color 2s because they're watercolor. If I use the wax crayons, I could seal it with a varnish, an acrylic varnish, and it wouldn't move. So that's just a little tip on there. I've got to run. Thanks for joining me, and I hope I've inspired you in some way. We'll see you soon.